Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You definitely tune in for a great one here. Emily McGuire is the owner and chief email marketer at Flourish and Grit, an email marketing and automation studio that's based just down the road from us here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Emily's specialty is helping businesses uncover hidden revenue in their email lists by pairing their unique customer journey with high converting copywriting. And she's earned her clients over $80 million in email campaign revenue in the process. That's pretty damn impressive. So maybe your company's marketing newsletter isn't giving you the results you want, or you don't even know what to measure in the first place. And if that's the case, Emily is here to teach you how to make your life easier and what your email campaigns really need in order to succeed. So I'd like to now formally welcome to the Boundless Virtual Stage, a personal hero of mine when it comes to email marketing, Emily McGuire. Thank you. Wow, what an intro. A personal hero. Wow, I'm so flattered. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about it. Get into all of the fun. <laughs> the fun things with email marketing. Um, so you get to listen to me geek out on my favorite topic, email, and why your newsletter isn't working and what you should be doing instead. So what, we're what are we going to talk about today? What are you going to learn from this session? Well, first of all, you're going to finally figure out why your newsletters are not working the way you want them to. Uh, we're going to reframe how you think about delivering your content in emails uh, and how to get your audience to take action from your newsletter. So that's what you're going to learn uh, in this session today. Uh, so stick around because it's going to be very juicy. I'm very excited. But first, we have to talk about something very important, my favorite topic, which is me, Emily McGuire. So you're, it's going to be your new favorite topic as well soon. <laughs> uh, like Ben said, I own Flourish and Grit, an email marketing and automation studio in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I help businesses uncover hidden revenue in their email lists. And what makes me qualified to talk about this? Well, I have some credentials. I got I got some pieces of papers from uh, some institutions. I got my master's in communication, certificate in digital marketing. Uh, I've been focusing on email marketing alone for the past seven years and have earned my clients over $80 million over those seven years in email campaigns. Um, and I've worked with uh, companies from little Etsy shops to coaches and consultants to really large e-commerce companies, uh, fintech companies, professional services, you name it, I've worked with them. It's been so much fun to get into people's businesses. And I am also, not to brag, pretty cool. I like to read, because that is the definition of cool, right? <laughs> Trashy TV. And I can't live without coffee because hashtag mom life. And I'm going to do this even though my friends make fun of me. I'm doing the, the hashtag sign. Um, I'm just owning it. So you have to deal with it. You're welcome. So now that we've talked enough about me, let's talk about email. Why email? Why is it so powerful? Well, you probably already have a little bit of an idea about that because you're here, right? You're smart enough to be here. But I'm going to throw some stats at you just to show you how impactful and powerful it can be. Uh, on average, people check their emails uh, about 15 times a day in the US. That's on average. So if you're like me and you have your emails open uh, on your desktop all day during the workday, then obviously that's just a perpetual open, right? Uh, so that is a lot of uh, opportunities to get your business, your brand, your offers in front of your ideal customers. Uh, email marketing also on average has a 3,800% return on investment. So for every dollar invested in email, uh, people on average get $38 back. And people are two times more likely to sign up for an email list than they are to engage with you on Facebook. And we know that uh, the social media world is increasingly becoming a pay to play model. You don't own that audience. So anytime one of those uh, channels changes their algorithm or decides to charge more to get your posts to reach your ideal audience, you don't have a lot of control over that. So that's why when you have an email address, you own that email address. You have a direct means of communicating with your, your subscribers, right? Your customers. 
So what's the problem with newsletters? If email marketing is so powerful, like I just said, why aren't newsletters uh, a great way to frame your email marketing tactics? So this is where I run into that struggle, right? Uh, I talk to people, again, not to brag, I talk to a lot of people about email. <laughs> uh, but when I start talking to people about their email marketing programs, usually they start with, do people even read newsletters? I put in all this time and effort into sending out my newsletter. I jam it packed with content that people say they love. And I'm not seeing any results from those emails. I'm not getting any new sales. And I like to refer to those type of people as content pushers. So they are pushing content, content, content in their emails. Like I said, jamming them packed full of information um, and not making any offers in that email to become a customer and are baffled as to why they are not making sales uh, because they are terrified of who I call the offer pushers, right? The two ends of the email spectrum. Content pushers are only pushing content. Offer pushers are only pushing offers. The only emails they are sending you are buy, buy, buy. Here's a sale. Here's a special offer. Give us your money. And so those content pushers get so scared of being like the offer pushers that they never put an offer in their email and they just overwhelm their audience with content to read. And the offer pushers have now have seen so much revenue success from only pushing offers that they're terrified of sending out content because they're afraid that they're not going to make as much money. But there is a happy medium, right? There's a happy medium of delivering content and offers so that you delight your subscribers without annoying them and making more money for your business, right? Because you're not doing this just for the heck of it. Um, and Well, if you are, um, I'm always happy to chat about that. I want to know about hobby businesses. That sounds like fun. Anyway, so what does this look like? I want to give you some examples on um, some sort, sort of newsletter type of emails and how they illustrate these points. So the first one is from actually another local Ann Arbor business. I have a very big business crush on Duo Security and Doug Song. Um, so I'm not going to uh, fault them at all for this email. It's a perfect email. <laughs> uh, but really, it's an example of what um, I like to refer to or talk about as a, a traditional newsletter, how we think of them um, as packed with content. And uh, if we look at it a little bit closer, it's article after article. All of the um, articles are equally weighted visually so that it sort of starts to blend together right? Um, you just see a giant list and then at the bottom you get even more links. So if we look at the calls to action on this email, because there's a lot of them, again, they're giving you a lot of options. They had a podcast with Margaret Atwood on it, which, I mean, if you're not impressed by that, I don't know what's going to impress you. But their primary call to action is listen now to this podcast. Um, here, read this story. Learn more about this article. Read more about this story. Learn more. And then, oh, click on all these links because there's a million of them. And then at the bottom, we also have the opportunity to follow them on social media. So I would argue that uh, asking people to read an article or listen to something, that is asking people to use their precious time on your content, right? In your email, which is the same sort of obligation somebody is asking you to do to spend money with them, right? If all you're getting are those offer pushing emails, they're still asking you to do something. Content pushing emails are still asking you to do something, right? They're asking you to read, read more, read all these million articles and choose one on top of it. So nowhere in this particular uh, email is if I got this email and realized, you know, I've been on their email list for a while. 
um, and I am ready to finally become a customer, how do I do that? That information is not here. Um, they are expecting me to go to their website, right? Go find the link that will get me to their website, then click again and again, maybe to find their contact form uh, on how to become a customer. And that's putting an additional burden on the subscriber to figure out how to become a customer. And we know from the user experience world, the more steps we ask somebody to take in an email, the less likely they are to take them, right? They're gonna fall off much more quickly. So that's sort of an illustration of what I'm talking about. As opposed to something like this, which is um, uh, uh, a business called Elenize, another local business. Um, Janelle Reichman uh, owns this business. She's a, a word, front end WordPress developer. And I love her emails and I wish I could take credit for them. Um, but she just knows how to deliver content. She has uh, one theme here, right? One primary piece of content with um, a simple call, call to action at the bottom with how to learn more about working with her. So let's dig into this a little bit more. So she talks again, one problem, um, cracking the blogging code, delivers her content within that, and then a simple sign off, one primary call to action, right? Not 10 million, and a button to, um, to that's directed to her call scheduling tool uh, with let's talk, right? Um, it's very focused, it's very clean. If I'm um, somebody who gets her emails weekly, um, which she does send them weekly, then uh, I know if I wanna read about this topic, then I'm gonna read about it. Otherwise I'll wait till next week. And if I'm excited about that content enough that I'm ready to work with her, then it's super easy to figure out how to do that. Um, here's another uh, traditional sort of uh, newsletter that um, it does include several articles. Uh, so this is from a company called Really Good Emails. If you are interested in email marketing at all, I highly recommend signing up for their email list. They have incredible content. Um, they have a whole um, email inspiration database. So you can go look for other ideas like this. So here's an example of that. So they have, again, one hero piece of content, one um, primary place that they focus your attention um, on the major theme of this email. They have a clear call to action, right? One visually focused call to action. And then, hey, if you're looking for some other supplemental content, here are a couple more things. And uh, they also put on an annual um, conference that's an intentionally very small conference. Well, I don't know if they'll be doing that this year, but they have an offer to go with this, right? So at the bottom, if you want to take it a step further with their brand, here's an option. And then here is a travel website that has, again, it's, and this is a very beautifully designed email. Don't worry if you don't have those kind of resources on staff. If you do, lucky, <laughs> I wanna come hang out with you. But um, here's another example from, like I said, a travel business. Uh, their focus is around one destination and they give you some uh, supplement, supplementary content, right? They guide you through the email visually, uh, telling you where to focus, right? And also breaking that content up. And then, hey, if you are ready to take this destination vacation, here are some options, right? So it's that perfect blend of content with offers, right? The, the offers make sense with the content and with a uh, customer journey, right? Your, your customers have been brought into your content, to your emails, and when and if they are ready to become your customer, give them the opportunity to do that. So how do we even start to strategize this, right? These are examples from a few different businesses um, all over the map in terms of what types of uh, services and products they offer. So how do you do this for your business? Well, it starts with the foundational piece of any marketing program and it 
is one thing that everybody sort of overlooks, right? When you are heads down trying to get the work done, it can be very hard to take a step back and think about what are your goals, right? Uh, and you would be shocked from how many businesses I talk to from like, you know, a, a very small Etsy shop or a new coach to very large tech companies, you know, what are your goals for your email program? And I, uh, nine times out of 10, get a blank stare, right? They're just like, well, uh, we just want to make money. And it's like, oh, okay, well, do you have any measurable goals? So clearly defining what those goals are, are going to help you focus what you are going to put in your email, right? Like how, how you guide somebody to achieving your goals. However, you also need to understand what your subscribers goals are, right? Their goal is not for your business to have an increase in revenue of 20% year over year, right? They don't care. They came to you to achieve one of their own goals. Uh, so that is typically around something like a pain point, right? which we will get into in a second. So we're gonna marry those two goals. But first of all, your business, what are the goals for an email program for your business? So this is something that has to be clearly defined to give you direction and give your content direction. So what does that mean, right? You might have some very big goals, some sort of organizational goals uh, to, to work towards. That can be revenue, it can be orders, bookings, projects deals, um, anything like that. How are you measuring those goals in your business? And um, so you at least have something to work towards and figure out how do you get your email program to plug into those goals, right? It also helps you advocate for the work you're doing and prove value of what you're doing. And then obviously you have those goals, but somebody needs to take an action to get to that goal, right? They're not just gonna walk up to you and hand you cold hard cash. Um, and again, if you have that kind of business, let's talk because I wanna know. I just wanna know everything, I'm so curious. <laughs> um, so what actions uh, do your subscribers need to take to get to that goal, right? You have to break it down into micro actions that you are nurturing and guiding your subscribers to take in order to uh, achieve those goals. So what can those actions look like? Again, it depends on your business, but it could be placing an order, booking an appointment, registering for an event, um, viewing more information about a product or service, um, or you could just have a general engagement um, goal action for your subscribers so that when you do have something specific to offer that um, you are trying to promote um, a service offering or a product, that they are engaged and primed to open an email in which you do that. So what are those actions that your subscribers need to take to get one, two, three steps towards your goal for them. So that brings us to, so now that we sort of defined what your goals are, what actions you need your subscribers to take um, in order to achieve those goals, we need to talk about your subscribers' goals, right? They came to you for a reason. Again, not just to hand you money, uh, but they are looking for something, right? They have a challenge or a pain point that they are trying to discover or trying to fix. They're trying to find a solution for that pain point. So how do you sp speak to your subscribers to help them achieve their goals and tie it to yours? So again, that is addressing their pain points. So they came to you for a number of reasons. Uh, again, these are all sort of general and it depends on what your business is. If you don't know what your customer's pain points are, there are a lot of ways to figure that out. I'm gonna overview just a few general ones that are uh, that will guide you in a direction you need to go. But um, again, a great place to research your specific pain points for your customers are either your customer service department, 
uh, your sales team who is having sales and discovery calls, they will know why people are reaching out. Uh, social media, your FAQ page, if you have, um, or your FAQs from your customers, again, your customer service department will be able to tell you that. Um, but those are three really great places to start. So in general, a pain point can be around anxieties or fears, right? Um, the economy, obviously, is a big one for people right now, personal finance, job security. Um, there's a lot of anxiety and fear happening right now. Just, I don't know, open Google News and you'll find something today <laughs> uh, that might appear, that might uh, lead to your business, right? And the solution your business offers. Um, anxiety and fears are pain points. Stress, right? There's a lot of things that stress us out. Uh, health, right? Obviously, again, we open Google News and you will see the latest uh, COVID counts. Uh, so health in general, your family's health, child care, if you are a parent, trying to parent in the middle of a pandemic right now, uh, and current events, right? Again, bananas time. So there's a lot to stress you out and you might have some solutions that can help people uh, alleviate that stress. Resources are obviously always a pain point for people. We all wish we had more time, money, um, help, right? People help and expertise. So that's another pain point that you can sort of um, work your messaging or content around. Uh, that all very general and you might have very specific pain points around this, or your customers, customers might that you can help address. So these are the challenges they're trying to solve. So uh, how can you offer them solutions? Um, and that is with your content and your offers, right? Th that is the business you are in. It is to help people offer them solutions to their pain points. So what can that look like? Um, so creative solutions, um, obviously content, um, content that tackles pain points. It's going to keep them engaged. It's going to make them feel like you know them and you get them and that you are trying to help them. So you can do um, guides, templates. If you can template something for your audience um, that they can use, uh, rinse and repeat, people love it. Action guides, tips and tricks, right? Those are all great ideas. Um, and then if you are in the product industry, buying guides are always super helpful. People need to know how to do research on what they're doing. So that might be something super beneficial for you, depending on your business. And then your offers um, always should speak directly to the pain points of your ideal customers and how you solve them, right? So some sort of idealized um, version of themselves an aspiration they're trying to get to, um, what will their life be like after they've overcome this challenge or pain point? So if you have maybe two or three service offerings, how are you positioning them to solve pain points? Uh, how can you plug them into your content and naturally lead from the content piece where you're outlining pain points um, and solutions to, hey, if you want to take this further, if you're looking for even more solutions, here are some of our offerings. Always framing it around them, around that will come off as less icky and more helpful. So how do we put all of this into action? Uh, so we sort of outlined that at the beginning of this presentation, but I want to give you again a few um, I want to reiterate what we talked about and give you a brief wireframe on how you can implement that for your own brand. So into action, again, like very focused, very centered around one primary theme with a few bits of um, complementary content at the end. So if we go back to Janelle's email um, about cracking the blogging code, Clearly, um, she is trying to solve a pain point around her services and offerings. So she's a, a website developer. And so anything that has to do with a website, she's going to have content around. And uh, if you're struggling with their blog, then she has the formula to crack the blogging code. She immediately implies your pain point 
um, which is cracking the code and a solution all in one go. So she focuses all of her content around that. And then at the end, um, her primary call to action is uh, let's talk. So if you're ready to talk about your website, let's talk. And then she has some supplementary content down here. Um, if you want to learn more about her business, you know, you can look more about her blog, her services, and her portfolio. And then here's another, oh, this is embarrassing. How did my email get in there? Oh, weird. Huh? Well, I mean, I guess since it's here, I got to talk about it. Oh, boy. Who put this together anyway? <laughs> Was that convincing enough? Were you convinced that I didn't do that on purpose? Okay. I'm just going to assume you are. Anyway, so here are my emails. Uh, here's an email I sent out recently uh, following a very similar formula. Uh, predictions for 2021 um, in email marketing. What do I see coming down the pipeline? Um, and it also helps people focus for planning their emails for the year, if you are a yearly planner. So um, focus around one primary theme um, with a sign off at the end, and then just a few more pieces of complimentary content, right? Um, so an offer uh, for some digital products, right? If you're ready to change the game on email, you can do so by looking at the products. And then at the bottom below, there are three ways that people can take it a step further um, that all tie into either more content that people could be interested in to help them solve more pain points, um, and then other two ways that they can work to, with me if they need to, right? So those that's an example of how to sort of structure this. And on this next screen is just a very, very rough wireframe of, you know, having a large headline, your hook, right, um, at the top with your headline, and then um, some compelling imagery if that aligns with your brand. Um, some brands are not... Um, heavily focused on images, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, having your hook at the top, a big bold headline that draws people in, your pain points, a solution to that pain point, and if you have an offer to tie in there, do it there, um, your call to action. And then um, I just recommend three um, visually de-emphasized supplementary pieces of content or offers that help people um, take it to the next level if they're ready. So that's how I uh, envision uh, a newsletter, right? So that it meets your goals, right? So that's what we talked about, uh, how to define your goals uh, around your email marketing program so that you know where to guide your subscribers to next. Uh, make your content easy for everyone, including yourself. You don't need 10 million articles in, per email. Um, one is good, um, but having a couple other options are also great. Um, and then how to help your subscribers take action. So how do you guide them out of that content and the email to becoming a customer? And then again, that is defining what actions your customers need to take to do that. So if you are looking for uh, more information on email marketing and uh, you're trying to tackle this whole email game yourself, I have a free action guide called Boost Your Email Open Rates ASAP um, through the link below. Uh, it's a guide on exactly how to do that, including a subject line formula and how to use emojis without being annoying. <laughs> Oh, Emily, I've, I've been furiously taking notes this whole time. I, mm -hmm. I do have a couple of follow-up questions that I want to get uh, your way before we let you go. Um, first of all, how often is too often to be emailing your marketing list? I mean, that is um, a question of resources. It takes a lot of resources to send an email, right? And I have seen um, some influencers and thought leaders out there say email daily, which if you can do that, um, you, you can see really great results. The problem is you lose way more subscribers. So you end up chasing your tail, trying to replace those subscribers. 
So if you have the resources to do those things and it makes sense for your brand, then try it out. Um, but minimum, I recommend uh, emailing once a week. Um, the digital marketing or people's attention spans are very short with digital marketing. And so once a month um, leaves a lot of space to forget about what you learned about that brand in your inbox. So I recommend weekly to keep your audience warm and uh, keep promoting your offers and services and content. Makes sense. You know, you mentioned that in that content offer, uh, you're including a, a formula for subject lines. And I was hoping you could give us a, a, just a sneak peek or a taste. Mm -hmm. you know, what's your general approach to writing a good subject line? And, and what is your own sort of personal philosophy or formula behind it? So um, really it's, you know, what is the outcome or benefit somebody is going to get from opening your email? Um, thinking about it from that perspective and um, really uh, it's, I can't remember where I saw the statistic, but if you put the word you in a subject line, um, testing has shown it can increase opens by like 10 or 20%. So That's yeah, and it's just also a really great mindset shift to think about, okay, what are they gonna get out of this email? What What's the biggest benefit for them? You have to spell it out. Mm -hmm. uh, last question and something I ask every email marketer I come across, what's the one email marketing metric that you actually care about? That I actually care about? Um, well, I mean, honestly, so if you had all the data in the world, customer lifetime value would be the best marketing metric, but not everybody has access or right. quality data around that. What I like to pay attention to is unsubscribes uh, mm -hmm. because it tells me how healthy the email program is in general. If you see a spike in unsubscribe rates, then something's wrong right? And it might not just be the content in your email. So um, yeah, I, I look at unsubscribes and bounce rates, because that tells me about the, the actual health of the email program. Gotcha. Well, that's all I have today, Emily. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, thanks to everyone who is watching. We've got a lot more from Boundless 2021 coming up. Please stay tuned.